I came across this thing called trad wives, which is short for traditional wives. Trad wives are women who post TikToks to share how they serve their families while dressed like 1950s housewives. The most famous trad wife is Estee Williams, so we'll let her explain what trad wives are. If you are not familiar with the term trad wife, it is a woman who chooses to live a more traditional life with ultra traditional gender roles. So the man goes outside the house, works, provides for the family. The woman stays home and she's the homemaker. She takes care of the home and the children if there are any. Trad wives also believe that they should submit to their husbands and serve their husbands and family. No trad wife TikTokers are saying every woman's place is in their home. We as individuals are just choosing to be homemakers. That's all. Oh, that's great. Good for you. But being a wife and a mother should be your top priority always. And the truth is, there is no higher calling than being a wife and a mother for a woman. Now, let me make this crystal clear. I am not undermining any woman who wants a career. If you want a career along being a wife and a mother, that is great. But being a wife and a mother should be your top priority always. Oh, okay. So that was a lie to twist the narrative to manipulate people into thinking that you're minding your own business when you're actually not. When people online pointed out that trad wives are glorifying conservative ideals, Ben Shapiro and his right-wing reactionary minions ate that shit up and went like, ha, the feminists are triggered. And all the comments were like, feminists, women should have choices, trad wives, I choose to be a housewife, feminists, no, not like that. Or imagine getting mad at someone for loving their husband and children and acting like feminists are mad because the woman in question made the choice to be a housewife. Firstly, the criticism doesn't just come from the feminists. The right-wing reactionaries are just pushing the feminist versus trad wives dichotomy to demonize feminists. And secondly, there's clearly a difference between making a choice to be something and displaying this choice on TikTok to shame other women who aren't making the same choice that you're making. S.D. Williams is not just saying, hey, I'm a housewife and I'm happy because good for you. She's saying that a woman's priority should be family. And it's okay for you to have a career along being a wife and a mother only as long as your priority is family. To be clear, she's using the high modality verb should to express a strong sense of moral obligation, and she's using the adverb always to deliver this with strong elocutionary force. She's not even giving advice. She's giving a direction to other women regarding what we should be doing with our lives. And in doing so, she's putting her own values on a pedestal to put down women who make other choices based on a book that says that she herself will go to hell. And that is what is so great about this movement. Order is coming back into place in a chaotic world. She's doing hell of a lot more than simply loving her husband and children. It doesn't mean that we are trying to take away what woman fought for. Oh, okay, sure, I'll just take your word for it. I'm sure it's not pushing this alt-right agenda that's advocating to take away women's rights. Why are we telling women, even starting out as young girls, that they need to have a life of independence? I think that that is a very toxic way to bring up a girl, to tell her that she can never depend on a man and even if she falls in love with that man, um, always have a way of supporting yourself. This idea is so twisted. So she actively speaks against feminist progress, and then when she faces criticism for the opinions she chooses to put out onto the internet, she then pretends that the trad wife thing is not politically motivated. The misconception about the trad wife movement, um, it's not really a movement, nobody's pushing it. People are typically just living it and maybe showcasing their lifestyle like me. Oh, she's just an innocent, well-meaning housewife living her life, suddenly being attacked by the feral feminists for no reason. Her whole argument went out the window as soon as she said right-wing. Being a mother or a father is not a right or left-wing thing. No, it's not. That's why the trad wives gave themselves a different name instead of using the very readily available label housewife. Because housewife is an apolitical term, but trad wives want to rebrand themselves as gentrified right-wing housewives and attach normal innocent things like baking bread to the idea that servitude should be a woman's top priority always. But when people disagree with their ideologies, trad wives are suddenly equivalent to housewives? And if you criticize trad wives, you're putting down housewives? Come on. So... It's okay to get married and to buy a house with somebody to reproduce and raise a family with that person, but don't depend on that person financially. This, this idea is so twisted. We're constantly being told we can't trust each other and men are being told they can't trust women anymore, that all women want is to be promiscuous and you can't trust a woman, everybody's a cheater. This, this, this is so toxic, you guys. So the distrust between the genders is due to women's financial independence. Got it? So why did men and women distrust each other way more when women had zero financial independence? 
can be because foregoing one's independence simply heightens the stakes of trust and makes it much more difficult to trust, which increases one's perceived need for control and creates tensions in the family dynamic, right? Couldn't be that viewing female financial independence as a threat to the harmony between the genders is the very manifestation of the lack of such harmony and serves to further perpetuate it, right? It's so clear that at the root of this housewife cosplay is not her love for family or domestic bliss or doing what she personally loves for her, because if it was, it would be fine. But no, she's using this platform to actively speak against women's rights. She's saying, I don't need feminism, so no one does. And I'm not saying that she shouldn't be allowed to say these things. I'm just saying that if she chooses to express political opinions, which she has, then she must accept that she won't be rightfully immune to criticism from the people who disagree with such opinions. You can't just completely unsolicited tell people that they should live a certain way or that the way they live is twisted, and then get mad and play the victim when the people that you're criticizing criticizes you back. Of course this doesn't warrant comments like this, but people who say, ha, the feminists are triggered because a woman made a choice, they're contradicting their own movement, are arguing against a straw man argument. They're intentionally twisting the argument and switching out the subject of the argument from tradwife to housewife to make the criticism against tradwife seem nonsensical. Saying the feminists are mad at a trad wife because she decided to be a housewife is like saying the Americans were mad when 9-11 happened because the Al-Qaeda decided to fly planes. Flying a plane is only an inconsequential part of what the Al-Qaeda did. The Americans aren't mad because the Al-Qaeda flew planes, they're mad because the Al-Qaeda flew planes into their fucking twin tower. The feminists are not mad at the choice that she made to be a housewife, we're mad at the choice that she made to push a thinly veiled anti-feminist political agenda and then play the victim when she faces criticism for it. Do you think normal fucking housewives want to be represented by these weirdos that try to make house wife synonymous with misogynistic conservative ideologies. When someone pointed out that the trad wives are doing a lot more than just living their lives, the comments underneath it said, so she can't just inspire others? If inspiring others means moralizing and criticizing other people's lifestyles while putting her own on a pedestal, then she absolutely can. But that means I can too. I'm also allowed to criticize her lifestyle, not the housewife part of her lifestyle, but rather the trying to take away women's autonomy part of her lifestyle. And I can also inspire others to not not be a housewife, but not to be a dumbass. We don't care what rich white women choose to do until they tell us to do the same thing that they're doing and wrongfully assert that the world would be a better place if everyone was like them. It would not. Here's another comment under this video. What problem would there be if a sector propagandizes this lifestyle? Don't women have the choices to choose voluntarily? He's saying that it's okay for tradwives to promote their ideology on the internet because ultimately women have free will. Women do indeed have the choice to choose their lifestyles voluntarily. So certainly it would be okay if I post a video disagreeing with the tradwives, right? Your definition of free speech doesn't only work one way, right? If propaganda has no influence on people's choices like you claim, then tradwives shouldn't be so bothered by the supposed big twisted chaos as telling women financial independence is important, right? It's crazy we've gotten to a point that what used to be a standard mother is now a TikTok trend. That's weird. I don't remember any standard mother posting TikToks condemning college and pasteurization. Normal housewives are still normal housewives. These people are cosplaying as housewives. Just like how the only people who romanticize the countryside are the people who weren't forced to wake up at 4am in the freezing cold to feed the goats, the only women who romanticize being housewives are women who aren't forced into that position. Before I talk about how everything tradwives say is a false dichotomy, I want to demonstrate the biggest reason that one should go to college. I always said I wanted to be a homemaker, I wanted to stay home and cook and clean and live a simple life, and I was told that that is a very high calling for a woman, however, I should go to college, pick a degree, start a career, then get married, then have children, and then become a stay-at-home wife and mother, and that, that makes no sense. Oh, why? Why would I live my life that long single? You know you can date in college, right? You know you can actually even get married in college and have a degree and a job and cook and clean. You know, college students actually cook and clean against our will. Independence does not equal fulfillment. We are meant to share this life with our soulmate, not be independent and lonely. Independence is not equal to loneliness. These words do not mean the same thing because they're different words. Independence is not mutually exclusive with love or fulfillment. This is what a false dichotomy is. Establishing something as being dichotomous or mutually exclusive with something else when it's not. Which you would probably know if you didn't drop it a call. Old me. I want to be a boss babe, make lots of money and buy a huge house and designer handbags and never get married and be vegan forever. New me. I want lots of kids, be a stay-at-home mom, homeschool and home birth, have a farm, grow my own food and raise animals, cook from scratch. You know you can do all of these things at the same time, right? Why do men never have to choose between parenthood and being a boss babe? 
Oh, the feminists are yelling at the tradwives because they think being a housewife isn't feminist. Tradwives are the ones who started the false dichotomy that you can't be a housewife and a feminist at the same time. Before, I was this. After, I was this. Is a common template that these tradwives use for their TikToks. Before, I was making six figures on OnlyFans. Now, I'm wearing a sundress, being at the farmer's market, frolicking in fields, baking bread, and milking cows. I used to think being a stay-at-home mom was a waste of your life, but now it's all I want. It's interesting how commonly tradwives use this before, after, transformation template, as if the temporality of the argument lends itself to the validity of the argument. Because these two states of being are arranged in chronological order, it must suggest that she has grown and matured, because that's the chronology that most things follow, and so the latter state is superior to the former state. Well, did you know that before society was this? and after society was this. It's almost as if society has grown, but you decided to go back to drinking unpasteurized milk. But not really, because before society was this. And that's a different thing from what you're doing now, because before was genuine labor, and after is a pretentious piece of shit. They always establish this hierarchical dichotomy in their videos between the choices they make and the choices that other women make, even if it's simple things like wearing Lululemon. <laughs> What does not wearing Lululemon have to do with being a traditional wife? And if you're so concerned with getting all the details of being a traditional wife down, then why do you have a monetized TikTok account? That's neither traditional nor very wifely of you. Ain't no police around here, baby, I won't judge you. Again, this is the list of things that you're doing, and this is the one that we're mad at. You're pretty bad at trying to make a strawman argument for a farmer girl. <laughs> This TikTok trend is part of a larger societal phenomenon where white people with the white people are the real victims of racism are starting to realize that no one's giving them attention anymore because everyone's paying attention to climate change. So they demonize the social justice movement and desperately try to make themselves the victims, even though they're the ones punching people left and right unprovoked for no reason. While the world continues to condemn trad wives, I'll continue to live my truth. The world? The world doesn't fucking know what trad wives are. Did you mean the comments on your TikTok content that you choose to put out into the public? If your truth is being a trad wife, then no one would condemn it. But your truth seems to be putting out TikTok videos to tell women to give up their rights. What a way to make yourself sound like a heroic martyr. Let me try it. As the world continues to condemn sitting on the floor playing Sudoku, I continue to live my truth. Actually, you know who this format would actually make sense for? Criminals. As the world continues to condemn serial homicide, I continue to live my truth. Just because the world condemns you doesn't make you the victim, it doesn't make your cause meaningful, and it certainly doesn't make you right. Just let us traditional wives care for our families. Why does it bother you so much? Just let us not be trad wives. Why does it bother you so much that women go to college? Trad wives are the only ones that are telling other women completely unsolicited what they should be. No one's pointing fingers at housewives and shoving careers down their throats, because why would other women want you to enter the workforce to compete with us? The more people become farmers, the better. To further their self-inflicted victimhood, the trad wives like to act like they're fighting the movement or the system. Want to fight the system? Build a self-sufficient community. Take responsibility for your health instead of rely on big pharma. Grow food and preserve the harvest. Teach your children to love God, not the world. Get married and start a family. Learn to cook from scratch. What system are you even fighting? Who's forbidding you from building a self-sufficient community? Are those pancakes made from scratch? FBI, open up! Imagine the audacity of the mainstream to suggest that a career is more fulfilling for a woman than raising a family, caring for farm animals, serving a good husband, cooking... Think about this. She could have just said that growing chickens is more fulfilling than a career for a woman. Isn't that essentially what she's saying? Why doesn't she just say that? Because then she would obviously be giving a dogmatic, unsolicited opinion about how all women should live their lives that isn't supported by sufficient reasoning. Even when they have an opinion, they can't just say their opinion. They have to build up an invisible enemy so that they seem like the oppressed ones so that they have an excuse to say their opinion that no one asked for. The enemy in question is always something vague, like the mainstream, or the system, the chaos. In a world full of chaos, where people are becoming more resilient and rebelling against that chaos happening right now. Because they can't really pinpoint which people constitute the mainstream. It just means people who disagree with me. If the mainstream is the left, then it wouldn't apply that they're condemning her for criticizing Big Pharma. The left also criticize Big Pharma. They just also choose to be vaccinated. If you think you're the victim of the feminists, those oppressive, tattooed lesbians that you're fighting against with your movement, let me remind you, ma'am, that the movement is the tattooed lesbians. 
Your patriarchal heteronormative narrative is the mainstream narrative that has been around for thousands of years and that our current society is still in every way deeply and systemically rooted in. And you're the one that's saying it's twisted for women to not completely rely on their husbands. You think shaming other women for not wanting to be housewives is a new thing? Is a revolutionary movement? Sorry babe, it's been going on for a fucking while. Women are still less engaged in the labor force, there is still a wage gap. Other women are fighting to get equal wage so that they can afford an idle life like yours. Women going on to have independent careers careers is a norm in the Western world. And norms create social pressure, but social pressure is not institutionalized oppression and it's not a predetermined path. These people want to be special, but they also want to see their own actions reflected in other people. Because if they do house chores alone, then it's not cool, so they need to make themselves all pretty to romanticize this lifestyle and persuade others to do house chores with them to make it a movement. And if people don't want to join them, they can just say, oh, that's because I'm special and I'm fighting the movement. We as individuals are just choosing to be homemakers. That's all. Even when they think they're doing something revolutionary, they can't just be revolutionary on their own. They all share the sentiment of, I abandoned a conventionally successful life to be a trad wife, and they use that as an argument to say that the trad wife life is better than going to college and stuff like that. But this video by Esty says otherwise. I tried fitness modeling, but I had to cut that off. I moved to Vegas to create a reality TV show with my family. That didn't work out. I was in college to study meteorology, but I dropped out. I attempted to be an actress. That wasn't for me. So what you're saying is, all your previous attempts at getting rich and famous and building a career for yourself didn't work out, so you got married and became a TikToker. Yes, scratch the shroud wife, that's not your occupation. Your occupation is a TikToker. We're seeing a pattern here with the two data points that we have. Gwen the Milkmaid abandoned her OnlyFans account and YouTube ASMR career to marry rich, and Esty abandoned a list of failed attempts to become a trad wife. So coming to the conclusion that being a trad wife is preferable to these things is not making a strong case about how fulfilling you claim trad wife life is. You can't just act like you traded the dream life of the liberal feminists to be a trad wife and say, aha, I prefer being a trad wife to the ideals that you have, when it sounds like you were just never able to create anything better than trad wife life, so you had to settle for this, the verb being settle, not exchange, but it hurts your ego to settle, so you want to make it sound like you're fully enjoying yourself, and of course, when you truly enjoy your life, Life, you can't just enjoy it on your own, you have to put it on the internet to desperately convince every internet stranger of how happy you are. Which as we all know is exactly the kind of thing that a happy person would do. And to make an income, but that's not what traditional wives would do, is it? Under any video criticizing trad wives, there are always comments like, she's making this way too complicated to say she's miserable, just let us trad wives care for her families. Why does it bother you so much? Listen y'all, happy housewives are some of the most beautiful women I've ever met. Like, what the fuck? Okay. It's insane how much people hate seeing anyone happier than them. Which, first of all, what a valid argument that's totally not an ad hominem fallacy built upon baseless assumptions. And second of all, are you sure that the internet strangers who you know nothing about are pissed because we're collectively jealous that we can't serve a husband, and not because we're forced to come across this idiotic content that they think we're too stupid to notice as right-wing propaganda? Or could it be that the women who upload hundreds of highly manufactured TikToks to try and convince internet strangers that they're happier than we are, are doing so because they're jealous of other women who were able to build a successful career that these women were apparently never able to do themselves? But anyway, getting a little elitist there. Whether or not treadwives are truly happy is not something I can discern as an outsider. It's just a little sus. Here's a question. What if men want to frolic on the field? Oh my god! I'm frolicking! Why y'all ain't tell me we was frolicking? I'm about to oh, we frolicking? That's what we doing? We frolicking? Let me get my frolic going. Oh god, I know we was out here frolicking. <laughs> Isn't this a beautiful sight? <laughs> Women are not meant to work a 40-hour desk job. Have we considered that men may not want to work a 40-hour desk job under this utilitarian hellscape? Ben Shapiro thinks that these women are actually in tune with what they were biologically designed to do because women aren't biologically designed to work. Which is interesting because no human is biologically designed to sit on an uncomfortable chair in an office and type on spreadsheets for the majority of the day, only moving when summoned to continue to sit in useless waste of time meetings on uncomfortable chairs. Now that you bring up biology, women aren't exactly biologically designed to wiggle while holding a rectangular prism and wearing five pounds of mascara. Back in the most traditional ages, everyone was frolicking in the fields. 
And also, everyone was actively dying. Anyway, back to men's rights. Teaching young women to rely on their husbands puts immense pressure on men. That's the kind of thing that wifely tenderness and unpasteurized milk can't fix. I don't understand why the alt-right is trying to glorify stay-at-home moms and use the stupid TikTok trend as a political agenda. I get that they want women to be subservient, but these are the same people, the same men's rights activists, who complain about men being lonely and bitchless, as if the male loneliness epidemic and the flattening of men into their monetary worth is women's fault. Only women, children, and pets can be loved unconditionally. A man can only be loved under a condition that he provides something. Yeah, because historically women have been taught to rely on men as providers, and we were actively denied our independence. Saying that women are biologically designed to carry children and frolic, and that men are biologically designed to labor, leads to women being reduced to their sexual value, and men being reduced to their income. This means that women start OnlyFans, which you don't like, and men pay for dates, which you also don't like. What you do like is an excuse to say that women are lesser just because you use stuff like this to persuade us that we are lesser. And for women to be obedient unconditionally and labor without pay, being essentially slaves. But slaves do have prices. If you can't afford to financially support a woman, you don't get one. So if you don't want to pay for dates, you don't get a woman. This is the current social climate. It resulted in the male loneliness epidemic, which men are already pretty unhappy with because they're expected to pay for dates and provide for the family, and emotional expression is considered a female trait. So it logically follows that if we want to regress further and encourage women to fully rely on men, men are going to be less happy. Everyone, in fact, is going to be less happy. Tradwives continuously conflate completely different issues with each other and act like that bill is a valid argument. We've already seen how they conflate being a housewife with not going to college. Now let's see how they conflate feminism with capitalism. When you realize feminism only benefits corporate America, pushing women into careers to higher taxes, making it extremely hard to live off of one income? Ah, yes. So the sole reason that women go to work is to increase government tax revenue and not to earn higher expendable income for themselves or to increase overall economic growth. Do you realize that men also pay taxes? With their income? Along this line of logic, if you can even call it that, all household income is bad because they contribute to government tax revenue, which apparently makes it difficult to live off of one income. So why is it feminism that you blame this on? And why is it women that you think should not earn an income? Money is not gendered. If you don't like paying taxes, and if you think the solution to the increased need for dual income is to pay lower taxes, then why does your husband work? And of course, higher taxes is obviously the reason that there's a higher need for dual income nowadays, definitely not the rising cost of living and the stagnant wages. When you realize that feminism is not capitalism, and that you need to pick up a book. I need to stop calling people dumb. It's kind of elitist. No. I don't want to be a girl boss. I want to be a farm mama who bakes bread, milks cows, and frolics barefoot in the garden. Guess what? Everyone wants that. Men, women, children, we all want to reach a state of financial welfare where we can frolic in the field in our pretty dresses all day and only labor when we feel like it and fuck up our jobs without any consequences. But most people can't because most people don't have the privilege to sit around and do nothing. You didn't get this nice farm and this lavish aesthetic lifestyle because you embraced God and your own femininity and follow these conservative values. They're trying to make the narrative sound like, I think women should not have financial independence because we're happier frolicking in the field. Everyone wants to frolic in the field, no one wants to work a 9 to 5. Don't conflate your conservative ideology with a literal definition of financial utopia. Being a trad wife is way more of an economic decision than it is a political or cultural one, because one of you can afford to willingly participate in unpaid domestic work. You're just forcing political value onto it. You got this lifestyle because you use the privilege you already have to marry rich and do nothing. You can't preach for modern women to do the same because you know that most women will not marry rich because there aren't enough rich men to go around. And if we listened to you and removed all the women from the labor force, there will be even less rich men around. Also, Gwen's lifestyle is at least partially supported by the six-figure OnlyFans account she used to have. You afforded this traditional life with something you look down upon now. The funny thing is, the tradwives didn't even get right to the historical narrative that they're trying to emulate with the 1950s aesthetic and the trad and trad wife. This romanticized idea of a stay-at-home mom in the 1950s was not the reality in the 1950s. It was the perfect American dream ideal portrayed on the advertisements used to sell microwaves to consumers, the majority of whom are families that required both parents to work because they weren't as financially privileged as you are. The reason there exists these images from the 1950s that trad wives modeled their aesthetic off of is because those images are like these images that exist today. They portray a life that most people can't afford living, and they tell you that if you buy this jelly powder, you'll be able to get this life. This is what they're saying women are biologically designed to do? Does anything in this image look biological in any way? The makeup, the hair, the pretty little dress, this feels so manufactured and unnatural that it falls into the uncanny valley. The reason it feels unnatural is because it is. 
This reeks of economic inequality and white privilege and the failed American dream, which are built upon centuries of social constructs that humans made up. It's not biological. First it was yoga, then it's avocados, and now white women on TikTok are gentrifying housewives. Society doesn't condemn you, a rich white woman with a spare time to cosplay as a housewife. Society condemns, looks down upon, and exploits real housewives who are overworked and doing unpaid domestic labor. They work just as hard as men, but the social value of their work doesn't get recognized because it doesn't produce material wealth for them. Most housewives are forced to be housewives by societal expectations that disproportionately burden women with unpaid domestic work that keeps them away from the workforce. You choosing to be a housewife has nothing to do with the feminist movement because the movement was never against women choosing to be housewives. It was about how some women don't have the choice to not be housewives. I don't care if rich white women choose to become housewives. Feminism is about trying to give other women the power to choose, and it's annoying when you stand in the way to say, hey, but I chose to be a housewife, gotcha, dismantled your movement, are you mad at me now? Are you triggered? Are you mad at me? You have the power to pick and choose which rules you want to follow within your own ideology. If trad wives really were in traditional marriages, none of them would be able to upload on TikTok. If even I find this shit embarrassing, what do you think the 1950s would think? Gwen also wouldn't be married in the first place because, as far as I know, traditional marriages don't take women who used to sell their tits on the internet. Oh, people can change? Well, traditional society doesn't exactly account for that with its notions of virginity and the idea that a woman is dirty and broken after she has been sexually available in the past. If you think that feminism isn't necessary in today's society, then feminism isn't about you. Privilege is invisible to those who have it, and we're not trying to empower those who already have power. It's about empowering the women who don't have choices, the mothers who had to sacrifice their careers to get a rag thrown on their faces, the girls sold to child marriages, the women who have hopes and dreams of affording a house like yours but they can't because neither them or their husbands make enough money for that because female subservience is not a path to financial stability like so many of you suggest. It's also for children who leave comments like these that are my videos. If trad wives don't want to be included in the feminist movement, then take away their fucking rights. I'm completely fine with that. It's not about you and it's never been about you. We don't hate housewives, we hate people who are oblivious to their own privilege, who try to use their irrelevant voices that are way too loud to undermine a movement that was about the empowerment of other people in the first place. So don't pretend that you're saying something meaningful when you use the power you're privileged enough to have to make a decision that you didn't have to fight for. Why would women try to undermine a movement that gave them the right to undermine anything in the first place? It's fucking insane. Tradwives, here's a humble, innocent little opinion of mine, just delivered with a suspiciously strong elocutionary force. Go back to college or pick up a book. That was just my opinion, guys. That's just the way I personally live my life. So if you disagree with me, you just think that women shouldn't have rights. Now, let me anticipate the comments under this video. If you're gonna comment something along the lines of, feminists don't like it when women make choices, haha, -ha, or you're just jealous that they're happy, or they're just doing what they love, there's nothing wrong with being a housewife, or what's wrong with inspiring other women to become housewives, then you should rewatch the video. And if you're a man who is butthurt by this and you want to comment, you talk about the patriarchy, but men aren't the ones that are setting these standards for women. The patriarchy is not men. It's a historically established system. Men are the victims of it too. And if you're going to pretend that just because the subject of my criticism happens to be a woman that I'm criticizing her because she's a woman, the criticism is not because she's a woman, it's because she's obnoxious. Also, prematurely responding to the mandatory ad hominem comments here, you might be surprised to learn that saying that my tone is too aggressive or arrogant or that I don't show my face so I must be miserable or that I made a video just to whine so I must be miserable or that I'm a Nepo baby because I go to Stanford doesn't invalidate any of my arguments. These are irrelevant conclusions because your assumptions about my personal identity has nothing to do with logical arguments I'm making. The queer Kiwi made a cool video on this and she has really cool hair so I'm shouting her out. And I was going to tell you to not go and attack the women I featured in this video, but I know that my audience has better things to do than that, so... So sorry for the super late upload. I took a hiatus because I was studying for my midterms. On that note, can a billionaire please marry me so that I don't have to write my exams? I can learn how to make bread, and I don't mind if you cheat on me, just don't do it in front of me. Anyway, I woke up from my coma, and suddenly I have almost 20,000 people to disappoint. Yay, thanks guys. I don't know how we got here, but I guess we're going to roll with it. On a serious note, I'd like to condemn a disgusting revolt in the Discord server. I was gone for but a few weeks, and this Malaza guy has started a cult, and five traitors are now Malaza's number one fan instead of my number one fan. Stop it. You're making me cry.